friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Brooke and I just opened a bakery. I say just, but it's been about three months. We're just ending our third month. It's going really well. Um, this last Saturday, we had a line to the door like all day long. I couldn't even look up from my little window in the kitchen back there. Can you see our little pass? It just made me so anxious. My husband and I were kind of tripping out last night that like people came and ate our food. Like they came and waited in line and bought our pastries and ate them. <laughs> it's, it's just really weird. It's weird. We own a bakery. We have so much to catch up on and I have edited like the last six, seven months. Um, most of this is leading up to the bakery opening and kind of we're going to go over like how we did it. Let me just give you a little bit of backstory. I have baked in some capacity my whole life. My mom and grandma were like home bakers. And during the pandemic, I really ramped it up because we were stuck inside. Chase and I lived in LA and there was nothing to do. So I taught myself how to make really intricate pastries, painted cakes, uh, croissants, things like that. And then in like June, my brother-in-law, who's a chef and uh, owns a restaurant and a coffee shop here in Visalia, California, um, was like, do you guys want to open a bakery? And we were like, why not? I had just sold a business right at the beginning of the pandemic. And I was like, I never want to own another business again. And then, yeah, here we are. So Chase and I are the main people that are running the bakery. We are in charge of operations. We are the bakers. Our team is made up of Chase and I, my brother-in-law Tate, who is a chef, and our other partners are um, entrepreneurs and accountants and lawyers. Well, one of them is a lawyer and an accountant, and then the other two are entrepreneurs. So there's six of us total, okay? Um, we all put in the same amount of money. Uh, it was really not that much. Rent here in Visalia is like way cheaper than rent in LA. I don't know, like our oven was kind of expensive. Uh, we still need to get a bread oven, but we have a convection oven. I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. So we decided to do the bakery. It was really kind of like, yeah, let's just uproot our lives. And we did. And so by August 1st, we moved here. By September, we got into the space and started renovating. And then by like December 1st, we were open. So I have edited all of this footage and we're gonna go through it together and let's get to it. Here's how we opened a bakery. I think this is probably June or July when we first saw the space. There was a bakery here before and I, I never experienced it. This was like the first time I saw the space when they were already closed down and like selling all their stuff. The ceilings were blue. There was a ceiling fan. The floor was Pebble Tech. So here is like the kitchen and me kind of freaking out, realizing that this is really happening. I was really shocked at how big this space is. Our kitchen and back area is really large. So we kind of had a lot to work with. Here is my vision board that I put together. I wanted like this old world European feel to the building, but like then with a little bit more modern furniture. So there was a lot that we had to do to the actual building to get it to feel like this because it's, I don't know if this building is actually very old and um, it was just not, it was not very cute in here. I think we got our keys maybe a week or two early. So maybe toward the end of August. Yeah, I think this was like the end of August, right before September. And the first thing that we did was tape up these windows, which seems like a really <laughs> easy job, but we struggled a little bit here. We finally got it done. And then the first order of business was to get rid of this house. Now, bless the man who put this here. I think this was from when this was a candy shop. So like a couple 
businesses ago. And this was a proper roof. Like that's real terracotta tile. Everything is installed with nails. So we couldn't just like use a drill gun and pull out the drills. We had to pry everything up. There's tarp or like tar paper, whatever they put. It's like weatherproofed. It was an entire day's work just to get this off. And then I had plans once we removed the roof facade, I wanted to cover up these windows. We went back and forth and the one that goes into the kitchen, our partners wanted us to leave open so that it could be a pass and we could see out and they thought it would be charming if people could see us baking. So we closed up the window on the left, which was like a window to the office. I don't know, why would you do, why would you have it? It was just not cute. The next order of business was to skim coat the walls. And this was insane. My mother-in-law had done this in her house, so she kind of led the way. This takes like five coats to do, depending on how textured the walls are to start with. Ours were very, very textured. So you have to go in one direction with one coat, let it dry completely, go in the opposite. So you're kind of going vertically and horizontally and vertically and horizontally. And after you get about five coats on, then you have to sand the entire wall. I can't remember the square feet of walls we have here, but it's a lot. It's a huge space and it took a long time. I think it took like two weeks. One of the biggest reasons I wanted to do with the bakery was to design the space and I, really had to fight for the budget to do these wall moldings. Um, they just didn't really get it. My business partners didn't really understand why we were spending money on something that was not like going to necessarily make us money. But for me, part of the entire experience and part of like everything that's built into the price of the product that you're selling is the experience that you're selling with it and the atmosphere and the space. I go places for the ambiance and I think a lot of people do. And so it was really, really a big priority for me to design a space that felt like a quaint European bakery. I am not great at math. I hated it in high school. I think I only got to algebra two and I had to take that twice. So there are some articles online and I can link them in the description. I had to take the measurement of the wall and then also take into account the width of the actual like molding pieces and then like the space in between. It was a lot of math. I knew how to do this. I knew the basic concept and I just kind of like explained it to my father-in-law and he had a miter saw and did the majority of the cuts for me, which was very nice. He had some really great tips that I will tell you. Here he's telling me not to store them like leaning against the wall. They were leaning on their points, which are obviously going to wear down the tips after you cut that angle. So lesson number one, just once you cut them, lay them out. And then um, he had me sand them. So the little splinters were kind of smoothed out. We used liquid nails to kind of adhere them to the wall. And I cannot recommend one of those laser levels enough. Um, one of our business partners had one that we borrowed and then my brother-in-law had this brad nailer that I actually got him for Christmas last year and I was like can I borrow that Christmas present <laughs> and I used it a lot I used it a lot for the bakery he was very generous um, but here's the cool thing that my father-in-law taught me and I will take this forever every time I do these because I am going to put these in like every home I ever own. So when you put them on the wall, you're going to do the bottom, nail it in, do one of the sides, nail it in. And then on the last side, you're just gonna nail in the bottom part of it so that top part has a little bit of wiggle room on the top. Then when you place the top panel, 
if you have cut your pieces like just slightly off, you kind of have like a little bit of wiggle room to adjust and then they'll fit perfectly. Isn't that brilliant? And then you're just gonna go through and fill in those holes with a little bit of wood putty. And here is the space after it's been primed. I remember this day, I was so excited. I just thought it was so beautiful just with the primer on it. Once we put the paper up, it was up for like three months and then didn't come down until like right before we opened. So it was very frustrating not being able to see things in daylight because I, I just can't stand not having natural light. Everything looks so much better in natural light. So I did a partnership with Lick on TikTok and they sent me a couple of paints and a couple of paints, quite a bit of paint, enough paint to cover the bakery and um, a couple rolls of wallpaper. And I chose blue one, which is just the dreamiest light blue you've ever seen in your life. It looks almost white on camera, but you'll just have to come to the bakery and see it in person. It is like the lightest light blue without being baby blue. It has a hint of green and a hint of gray. So it's, it's just delicious. Okay, you'll notice that the ceiling fan is removed. So we had our electrician take that out. And then we had Tate, my brother-in-law, spray paint the, not spray paint, but like air, air paint. What is that? Hey Chase, what's, what did Tate do? The sprayer. The sprayer. Just, but it's not spray paint. No, it's not spray paint. It's a paint sprayer. Paint sprayer. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. My brother-in-law used the paint sprayer. He did the primer and he did the coat of the blue. We actually did, I think maybe one, possibly two coats of primer and only one coat of lick. And they're not sponsoring this YouTube video. I just, it's really good quality paint and it only needed one coat. And this was on walls that we had just skim coated, which usually absorb a lot of paint. So. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. So the floors were kind of a drama. Basically, there's nothing under the pebble tech. It's just sub floor. So there was nothing to pull up. And even if there was, it would just be so expensive and almost impossible to remove pebble tech. So our best option was to skim coat the floors as well. And then we chose a vinyl that looked like wood. And I chose this. This is Havana Hickory from Cortec, but this is what it looks like in the space. And on this day, I came over and I saw they were about halfway done. And I was a little bit horrified because if you go back and you look at the sample, it is nothing like, it's just not representative of the actual floor. It, there's just so much more variation. The color is much darker. I was really disappointed. We went through, filed a claim, had a representative from Cortec come out and look at it. This kind of set us behind and it was a big pain. In the end, they agreed that the sample was not representative of the floor and we got the cost of the actual floor but not the labor. So we saved some money there. We could have like pulled it all up and gotten a new floor, but we were already so far behind and I just felt like I needed to move on. At this point now I'm just like, seems kind of silly. Um, if it was my home, I would definitely have ripped it up and put the floors I wanted. But I think like with all of the, furniture in here and everything else in the space, it goes and we've actually gotten quite a few compliments on the floor. So there you go. If you like it, it's Havana Hickory by Cortec. So most of the furniture and things that I brought into the bakery were DIYs or thrifted. The one thing, two things I got from Amazon were these lights, which I, I mean, these are the most gorgeous lights and 
this was one of the things that we hired our mm -hmm. electrician to come in. I kind of taped out where the counter was gonna be and he put them up and I had this like a, epiphany moment and I was like, we could have done this, but it would have taken us at least a day to figure out how to do it and then a day to hang them. And our electrician did it in like three hours and they, and he did a great job. They're perfect. I love them. They were $50 a piece. I will also link those in the description. Okay. And then there were a couple pieces that I got on Facebook marketplace like this armoire that I flipped. This is also lick paint and the wallpaper they sent me. Uh, eventually this is going to be filled with merchandise, but for now we just kind of put our coffee creamer and sugar and everything over there. The other thing that I flipped for the space was the top of my mother-in-law's hutch. She had this set of it. it was like a buffet with the china cabinet on top and she didn't want the top anymore and it was just on the patio and she was like, do you think I could sell this? <laughs> and I said, probably not because it, it's just the top, but I could turn it into a fireplace for the bakery. And so I did. And if you guys want me to go more in depth on this project, let me know and I will do that in a separate video. This counter was already here. It's actually back behind this counter. It was not that cute. I was not really happy about it, but it is very useful and it is um, like very heavy duty. It would have been very hard to remove and it, it, we put everything on it, so it's fine. For now, I just painted over that weird paper and um, so now it kind of blends in with the walls. I had to search for months to find our oven because our doors are only like 31 inches wide. We were either going to have to disassemble the oven outside on the street and then reassemble it in here or find an oven that fit into the door. I found an oven. It's, it's really great. It works very well and it fit perfectly into the doors. I have the story of the counter on my Instagram and TikTok, um, but basically this was also a Facebook marketplace find. I think this is probably worth about $5,000. I paid $100 for it and reinforced it. It's over 100 years old. It's gorgeous. It has the original brass marker and I'm, I'm just in love with it. That's the counter right behind me. Just to have that sneeze guard glass installed, those are like $1,200. So to have something that had like a built-in glass case and a counter for a hundred dollars. I don't think I'll ever, I'll just never do better than that. <laughs> so the other thing that I got from Amazon were the chairs. Um, they're great, kind of timeless, modern bistro vibe. And then for the tables, I ordered the bases on Websterant. And then I just got these tops from Lowe's, stained them, and um, they've held up really well. They're perfect little bistro tables. Okay, so here is the day we took the papers down. I think this was also the day that we had our health inspection and passed, and uh, we were here all day long. It was very exciting, and I think that might have been a right around Thanksgiving. And then we did a 36 hour shift where we did not sleep and we made pies for Thanksgiving. And it was the worst night of my life. And I will tell you about it later. But right after Thanksgiving was the Christmas parade and we were open that evening. And then I think that Wednesday we opened for business and we've been open ever since. So we really didn't have like a lot of time to kind of put the finishing touches I still need to change the awning outside. I need to add some pictures to the walls. We need business cards. There's like a million things that still need to get done that haven't yet um, because Chase and I are just here for like, now we're here for 11 hours a day, which is really great. We were here for 13 hours a day, but we're here 11 hours a day, like six days a week. Today is our day off, but it's a prep day. 
and then tomorrow we're open again for another week. So um, it's really, really hard right now to find time to do all of the little things that need to be done, but we are getting there. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. We just hired three new girls and they're all amazing. And I'm able to like hand off little things bit by bit. It's very hard for me, but they're learning quickly and they're doing a great job. And it's also really bizarre for me to have staff and like people that work for me. They're also younger than me, which is really weird. Like I just feel, I still feel like a child. And um, like one of my bakers is like a decade younger than me, which I remember when I nannied for the first family that I worked for in LA the mom was 10 years older than me. And I just thought, oh, she, she's so much older. And now that's me. It's so weird. So that is basically the last six, seven months of my life. If there's anything you want to see a little bit more in depth, just leave a comment below and let me know. If you want to come visit, we are open uh, five days a week, not six. <laughs> well, we are here six days a week. Um, we are at 110 West Main Street in Visalia, California. We're the gateway to the Sequoias. So if you're going to the Sequoia National Park, it's a great little town to stop in. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you soon. See you next time. Bye.